Six. So the Sydney Morning Herald, big splash today that uh, they were incensed that you said at a Liberal Party meeting the other night that the climate has always been dangerous and that it's no more dangerous now. Obviously, we've seen recent events uh, and if, obviously tsunamis are not climate change. Uh, but it was this is what really drove the Sydney Morning Herald nuts. The fact that you said fossil fuels have always protected humans from the climate, from the extremes of climate. Talk us through this well, idea, Remember, Craig. the extreme left like to think that the climate was like the Garden of Eden. It was always very peaceful. And it's only that fossil fuels turned the climate into this sort of terrible monster that's killing us all. But if you look at the evidence, if you look at the history and you look at the science, it clearly tells us that in the past, we were much more dangerously exposed to the ravages of extreme climates. And in fact, the scientific papers show us that compared to 80 years ago, or 80 years ago, you were 90% more likely, or there were 90% more deaths from extreme weather, from tornadoes, floods, cyclones, heat waves. There was 90% more deaths 80 years ago than they were today. Right. And that's not even counting that there's been a fourfold increase in the world's population. Yes. And back then there wasn't the reporting like we have today. So the, the evidence is absolutely crystal clear. OK, so we what live, is the evidence? Where do we, where, live, we, where live, do we, where do we get the firstly, evidence from? Firstly, we live at a time, that today we live at a time where we have never been so safe from the extremes of the climate. That's the scientific evidence. Now, the report, there's peer-reviewed reports on this. It's all... Uh, there's a gentleman, Dr Gokhani, yep. is his name. He's done a couple of reports on this. So he's done he this report, all... Wealth uh, and Safety, the... Uh... The amazing decline in deaths from extreme weather in an era of global warming, 1900 to 2010. So he's looked at that and he's backing up what you're saying. So this should be unambiguous, uncontested evidence, but because it's the complete contrary of what the climate change alarmists try and preach in our schools to get the converts into their, sort of basically their cult, this is why somehow it seems we've been... So, so th there's two aspects to this. So the first aspect is that we're safer than... So extreme weather events or whatever you want to call them, tornadoes, hurricanes, all the rest remember, of it. Remember, it's not just just safer. It's 90% safer. And when you factor the population in, it's actually 98% safer okay. we are today than 80 years So ago. we're much safer now. And the second half of this equation, which drives them nuts, is that the reason we're safer is because of the energy provided from... Yeah. Coal or plus fossil the, fuels. Plus the wealth we've created from free so market So talk us capital. through that part of the equation. Let's, look, let's just look at why we are safer and why we've had that decline in yep. deaths. We've got better structures. We've got concrete and steel reinforced buildings. Now, you can't make steel afresh mm. without coal. Right. That's uh, right. We've got... So when, so when tornadoes come and cyclones come, other like the Americans had their greatest catastrophe when the whole city of Galveston was wiped out by a hurricane back in the year 1900. It was six to 8,000 people died in that. Today, we've got the satellites in the sky that can predict or look at where the uh, cyclones and hurricanes are forming. Now, you can't get a satellite in the sky with a wooden catapult. You need, you need fossil <laughs> Windmills fuels to, and solar to, to panels, launch it off. We, yeah. Then you go to where well, we have so much more food today, our food production, our crop yields. Never before we produce more food. And that's because we've got fossil fuels for fertilisers, pesticides and herbicides. So the reason that we are so protected today and we, in, we live at this time when we're so protected from extreme weather is because of fossil fuels. And that drives the Greenies absolutely nuts. <laughs> yes, it was right. interesting to see the Greens protesters outside your speech <laughs> all uh, waving their placards, which we were all happily reading because well, they we've were We've got a street. photo. Let's have a look at the photo there. We've got a great photo here, Craig. Standing of, uh, under mm. the street lights, powered by coal-fired uh, coal uh, power stations. Um, I wonder how many steel... There you go. Here we go. So, oh, so this are. is our, outside your speech. So you're inside giving a speech about how deaths have declined uh, and that uh, fossil fuels are to help. Uh, 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 to take the, can take the credit for that. Outside, uh, you've got this uh, whole bunch, this is uh, of, of greenies and others, in uh, protesting about your speech mm. and uh, missing the huge irony that the only reason their protest mm. can take place is because there are the streetlights 
fired by coal, yeah. as you pointed out. And uh, without coal and fossil fuels, they'd be staggering over each other, poking each other's eyes out with their placards, banging each other over their head, and probably half of them wouldn't even make it home. None of us could <laughs> read the placards. <laughs> That's right. So I thought, look, so... they, were, they were oblivious to their hypocrisy. <laughs> as I walked out, I thought, well, let's just have a look at the New South Wales grid, yeah. how much power... Yes, so what did you find fossil out? Fuels. Yeah. At that time, we had 1.5% of the electricity was being generated from wind turbines. Of course, the sun was set... <laughs> So had nothing from wind, mm. and we had over 90% was coming from coal, 95% yeah. from fossil fuels. <laughs> and they've got signs up See, under so the So 95%, or 1.5% of that... Uh of those demonstrators could have been there if they'd relied on wind power and solar power. Which... We're down, we also were down at Middle Harbour and you could almost see the coal ships going <laughs> up outside the heads, <laughs> heading off to China and Japan yeah. and the rest of the world. We've got record coal exports currently yeah. at the moment. Uh, you know, hundreds of coal-fired power stations being built around the world. That's why our coal future here in Australia looks so bright for our coal mining industry. And your government, you're a member of the government, um, the... Uh, the, uh, you know, if there is a surplus, let's hope there is a surplus, for the, either this year or next, that is built largely on our coal mm. exports, which, of course, is also forgotten by the left. But just briefly, quickly before we go, uh, Craig, you were one of the ones who first uh, brought to people's attention the, uh, the idea that uh, agriculture and transport are the next big targets, So we ain't seen nothing yet right. in terms of the Paris Agreement. Mm. We've called on this program and you, you've joined us in that call, call for us to pull out of Paris. Explain why you were mocked and ridiculed, as you were today in the Sydney Morning Herald, yet we see now, we see now in documentation from the IPCC that that's precisely what they're planning to sign this weekend, their meeting about Remember, it. the war on coal is just the start. Yes. If you've read the documents, they want to have the war on cows. Yes. And, and this is... We, we often focus all about, uh, you know, climate change and uh, on energy and things. But what we've been talking about for the last decade has only been electricity. That's right. The electricity sector makes up only one-third of our so-called emissions, as we like to use the word. There's two-thirds in all the other sectors of the economy. So what we've done, the pain and suffering that we've had in electricity, if we continue down the track that we're going, you've got to do this to your agriculture, which simply means you've got to cull and reduce the size of your herd. So this means... So, so the same hypocrites will be out there with protests saying, stop, me stop eating meat, and they'll be going home and having a Mac or something. No, stop <laughs> for a Big Mac on the way, way home. home. And then transport. Tell us well, quickly course, about the tradies' you, use. You'll yeah. find that, you know, the, the rich elites and the UN bureaucrats will still have their sirloin and filet mignon. Yeah, of course yeah. they will. But of course it'll, be, it'll be the working people, people in Western yes. Sydney that, sorry, you people be told can't, you can't eat you meat. You can't eat meat because And, you, and you can't drive your tradies and, and, and then you've got the transport sector, yep. which is something like another 20-plus percent of our emissions. So transport and agriculture together are actually more than electricity. And we're only just looking well, at... Well, let, let me just yeah. say, Craig, you're the hope of the side. You always have been. Uh, it's absolutely... I don't know, un understand why the leader of your party can't understand that he would win the next election in a landslide. All of you and many more Liberals would be back in power and nationals if you did the simple thing of pulling out of the Paris Agreement and start this weekend in South Korea and saying, sorry, not interested. We'll be back in a tick.